can change the world And I believe the change begins with you and me very much. Like um, Tracy, I'd like to speak to Leonard Matlovich, the man, and what he meant to me and so many others who came out of the military closet to try and right a wrong that's been committed against so many generations of us. 21 words. 21 words are engraved on Leonard Matlovich's gravestones, speaking to the irony of our military's call to duty, honor, country, and its rebuke of the human expression of love between two men or between two women. When I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. In an age in which our history is relegated to dusty bookshelves or buried in internet archives, it is all too easy to forget the heroes who helped shape in adversity and triumph the world in which we live today. Leonard Matlovich was just that, a hero who helped shape an important part of our LGBT history. A patriotic American from Savannah, Georgia, Leonard served the three tours of duty in Vietnam, a total of 12 years in the U.S. Air Force, with an unblemished military record and a Purple Heart and Bronze Star to prove his medal. One day in 1975, at the age of 32, he was unable to reconcile the U.S. military's policy against gays and lesbians in the armed forces with his life experience. Leonard thus outed himself to his superiors and spurred a national dialogue that has, although contentious, progress to the point that we can now more than imagine a day in which discrimination against gay and lesbian service members is no more. In our culture of celebrity, in which courageous is an adjective easily bandied about, we must understand the courage it took Leonard, a conservative Mormon and church elder, to stand up in the mid-1970s and say no to a military that would send him to war and honor him for his bravery, but could not condone the idea of his loving a man. He said no to those who would deny or degrade equality in the name of military cohesion, supported by false claims, bigotry, homophobia, and intolerance. Sadly, our nation was not then in a place to do right by Leonard and by the countless other men and women whose careers were ended and whose lives were shattered by the U.S. military's anti-gay policies. Leonard died in 1988, but he was not forgotten, nor did his mission end. Four years after his death, our nation was plunged back into a contentious debate when a progressive U.S. President, Bill Clinton, pledged to end discrimination against gays and lesbians in the U.S. military. Old untruths were quickly trotted out. Following Leonard's footsteps, many gay and lesbian service members decided to oppose prejudice, not appease it, to dispel the fear of stereotypes, replacing them with truth and understanding. Regrettably, don't ask, don't tell ensued. As painful as this defeat was, it continues to be 13,000 Don't Ask, Don't Tell related discharges later. We persevered, we carried on, we refused to surrender. We are today, more than 30 years after Leonard's brave sacrifice, nearing Martin Luther King Jr.'s proverbial mountaintop. We are so close to achieving equality for gay and lesbian service members, and by doing so, honoring Leonard Matlovich and all those named and unnamed veterans who have withstood the cruelty defining our country's treatment of the LGBT community. But we cannot get there alone. Our new president has pledged to end Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and he must lead our country into the reality, into that reality by the force of his moral conviction to a true patriotism that what is right, that to do what is right because anything else is an injustice. And our democratically controlled Congress must legislate Don't Ask, Don't Tell's repeal, and it must do so swiftly lest it's an action further to justify injustice. I thus ask you, brothers and sisters, friends and allies, to not equivocate, to not yield. Leonard's life, Leonard's sacrifice, Leonard's memory all demand action on our part. Indeed, the final chapter of his life cannot be written while his cause remains unfinished. Nothing we say at this memorial can match what Leonard Matlovich and so many cents have done in those sacred moments 
in which our natural inclination towards self-preservation was supplanted by a burning need to begin that long and arduous climb toward equality. What matters now is what we do, what change we affect, and what future we build for our community. Thank you. When I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. And I